The Heian period of Japan is often referred to as the peak of jujitsu sorcery and cursed power, and the man at the top was no other than Ryomen Tsukuna. He was so feared that the rest of the jujitsu world needed to team up in order to defeat him. Upon his death, he was mutilated and his fingers were preserved in wax and sealed away in order to prevent his cursed energy from re-manifesting itself. However, in the modern day, Yuji Itadori consumed one of Tsukuna's fingers and has now become his host. Relishing in his rebirth by craving women and children, he now takes the form of someone almost identical to Yuji, with the exception of black markings that appear throughout his body. Tsukuna has been shown to have a very sadistic personality, which is best shown when he was laughing at Yuji's inability to help Junpei. Tsukuna is also incredibly egotistical and believes that he is deserving of the highest level of respects of all time. And spoiler for the manga, there is a scene in the Shibuya arc where the presence of an awakened Tsukuna is so great that all characters in the area instinctively lowered their heads. At that same moment, Tsukuna slashed the air, cuts off a piece of Jogo's head, putting him in awe, and Tsukuna's response to this being, do you believe that one knee is enough for me? At the moment, all of Tsukuna's decisions have been highly motivated by his own desire and enjoyment, taking life on a whim because they won't entertain him, or sparing life because he sees something interesting in them that can maybe pass off his boredom. This is best seen in his confrontation with Megumi. But did you know that the character of Ryomon Tsukuna also appears in Japanese folktale? The Tsukuna in folktale is often described as a two-faced, four-arm, four-legged demon whose height varies from, from 3 meters all the way up to 54 meters, depending on the text, but he is oftentimes described as being far taller than the average person. In his hands, he had a bow, an arrow, and two swords. He was quick-witted and had superhuman strength. Other interpretations of Sukuna describe him as a benevolent patron of the Hida region bringing Buddhism to the region and helping the once poor region to prosper, which is why there are several shrines that, that are dedicated to Sukuna to this day. And some historians believe there was a historical Sukuna. He was a local hero who went against the Emperor of Japan, who failed, and so has been portrayed as a villain. In Gifu, there is a temple that is said to have been built by Sukuna himself. According to legend, he defeated a dragon that did harm to the people of the area and built a temple right in its dwelling. Now, outside of the Hidan region, Tsukuna is going to most like is going to be portrayed as a villain. And usually all stories link up to he was threatening and plundering the people of the region, and so the emperor was forced to dispatch his elite guard in order to defeat him. Now on the mystical side, Tsukuna was a four armed demon that was laying waste to the land, and so the Emperor's greatest forces had to battle him and defeat him. Although there are some stories that view Sukuna as a noble being, those stories are few and far between. And there is a lot more bad stories about Sukuna than there are good. And there's actually a very interesting story about a cursed box that is believed to hold Sukuna's body. So a man found a wooden box when he was demolishing an old temple. He asked the temple master about the box. The temple master replied, Never open that. But his colleagues opened the box without asking. They found a mummy with two faces, four arms, and two legs. After that, the master came to take it back and said, You can't live a long life. As he told them, one died of a, from a heart attack, one was housed in a mental asylum, and the other three collapsed with a high fever. And finally... The last one suffered a grave injury from an, from an iron nail penetrating his instep. He managed to find the temple master's son and learn that the mummy was named Ryumon Tsukuna and was enshrined as the cursed power of the cult. When Ryumon Tsukuna was moved, somewhere in the area got disasters. Though the curse got calm when the cult leader died, there was a rumor that there are serial natural calamities in Japan have some kind of relationship where Ryumon Tsukuna was stored. Now for fun, let's quickly examine the similarities that exist between Jujutsu Kaisen Tsukuna and the Tsukuna from various folklore, and see if we can maybe extrapolate some future plot threads for the Jujutsu Kaisen character. Let's start with how he's described 
and right off the bat, it's a pretty one-to-one. Sukuna is a four-armed demon with two faces, who is incredibly powerful and intelligent. Now, the two faces of Sukuna is, is actually interesting, because at the moment, it's assumed that Sukuna looks like Yuji because Yuji was the one that consumed him. But what if Sukuna looks like Yuji because Yuji is Sukuna? There are various legends that say that Sukuna was a twin, that his two-facedness represented a twin. It's also said that Sukuna had two bodies in one. It would explain the four arms and the four legs, and and it does explain why Yuji is able to consume him. Plus, at the moment, the background behind who Yuji is is incredibly uncertain and surrounded by mystery. It's a slim chance, but it could be a possibility. Next up, let's look at their demise. In folk tales, Sukuna was taken down by the Emperor of Japan, sending his greatest force to kill him. Meanwhile, in Jujutsu Kaisen, the entire Jujutsu society had to team up in order to take Sukuna down. Now, this is actually interesting and can possibly tell a possible backstory of who Sukuna was. Now, in the more human stories of Sukuna, the reason why the Emperor wanted him eliminated was not because he was a demon, but because he represented a possible threat to the Emperor's rule. Now, if the Jiu-Jitsu society of a thousand years ago was anything like the Jiu-Jitsu society of today, then it's possible that, like Gojo and Yuta, Sukuna was a gifted sorcerer who constantly clashed with the leaders, and out of fear of his prowess, his execution was ordered, in fear that he could become something that could completely topple the Jiu-Jitsu world. Now let's also talk about how Sukuna's fingers were preserved in wax and sealed in a talisman. In other words, Sukuna was mummified, which directly relates to the curse story that was mentioned earlier. Before I go into Sukuna's powers, I want to mention one important link that exists in all the stories about Sukuna, but has not yet appeared in Jujutsu Kaisen. And that is the region where Sukuna came from, the Hidan region. I have a feeling that this region will eventually appear in the manga, and once we do, Sukuna will most likely be thrusted into the forefront of the story and a lot of mysteries surrounding his past and even future goals will be revealed. And finally, let's take a look at any powers that Sukuna might have that could be inspired by his folklore counterpart. And for this entire section, I will be going over spoilers from the manga. So if you made it this far, be sure to click, like, and subscribe for more content. Okay, that should be enough as a spoiler warning. Now, so far in the story, Sukuna has showcased four types of techniques. Two slashing techniques, dismantle and cleave, a ranged fire technique, and finally, his domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine. Believe it or not, all of his techniques fit wonderfully into the folklore inspiration, starting with the two slashing techniques. In almost all legends, Sukuna is described as having two swords, which are represented by dismantle and cleave. Next up, the bow and arrow. When Sukuna fights Jogu, he utilizes projectiles that fire in the shape of an arrow. Now, it's possible that this technique represents both the bow and the arrow, and now it could also be the case that when Sukuna gets serious, it's possible that he could manifest a bow out of cursed energy to that increases his destructive capability. Finally, let's go over his domain, Malevolent Shrine. This is most likely a reference to the fact that Sukuna has multiple shrines set up in his honor throughout the Hidan and Mino regions of Japan. And if you are familiar with the negative stories of Sukuna, those shrines are meant to worship a malevolent being, which is pretty on the nose if you ask me. But that's not really all about his domain. His domain is actually very unique. The domain does not set up a barrier around its activation zone and it makes constant attacks against all objects within its range. Perhaps be inspired, one man stand against the Emperor's army, and the fact that it doesn't set up a specific location might refer to the fact that Sukuna was unable to establish any land or a domain for himself in any of his legends. So tell me what you think about the King of Curses himself. Do you like him? Do you hate him? Do you wonder if it's... Let me know in the comments down below. And again, please hit that like button and subscribe for more future content. Thanks, and have a good week.